All right. <laughs> Good morning to the one person who's uh, paying attention. Let's see if we can get our IPM expert in here if he has a couple of minutes. Okay, that did not work. No, that did not work either. Okay, hold on. Uh, bu -bu. What's up, Blasted Puffin? Give me one second. This is this is what we're looking. Oh wow, I didn't see those little ones. Yeah. All right, this is what we'll be looking at today. I'm gonna try to get Saul on. If, uh, Okay, give me one second. Yes, there we go. All right, we'll see if Saul can join me. <laughs> Spotted no God. Yes. All right, so anyway, let's see if we can zoom in. We got some light, and then I got a couple stray ones that I already picked off. Let me just dump them. You guys don't need to watch the. All right. Aha! There we go. So this dude is upside down. Let's zoom in. Doot. Doot. All right, that is our maximum zoom. Okay, so, oh yeah, no, there are a bunch of them. Uh, if, uh, so you guys can't see it, but it's like one, two, three, and then there's actually a little scale, so Saul thinks it's a black scale, and then if you look, not at that guy, but check this out. So we found some scale last year. That is not, all right, let me zoom out. Let's, that would make it easier to one. Aha, uh -huh. all right. That, is that the dude I was looking for? Yeah, look at that guy. So I don't know that's like a baby of those, but these dudes are, so yeah, there's one, two, three, right up. Oh, there's another small one. Yes, Cheddar Bob. You are correct. But uh, this was the first time I've ever seen so much black scale, which are these, it's almost like they look like ticks that are just fat and happy. Uh, so I sent Saul, all right, that's very out of focus. All right, Cheddar Bob, identify this. That is a stock. Better lighting would be good. So Steve, do you, is this something that you've frequently seen? Like, I don't feel like I've really seen black scale very frequently on. So let's pick this, let me get a, some tweezers. All right. Wish we had like uh, some music going or something, but we'll we'll here we'll get this guy right here. Let's see if there are any babies underneath. Sorry. We'll... All right. We'll use 
is the thumb. I don't want to like crush it, but aha, there we go. All right. So this is the underbelly of the one I just peeled off. Yeah, so this was, uh, I just harvested a bunch of stuff uh, up at Tom's, well, we didn't really have much else in the beds. Maybe we had some lettuce. Uh, that microscope, this is, well, I don't know what the magnification is, but from the base magnification, this is one, two, three. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh my God. Look at all those babies. Holy shit. That is the money shot. <laughs> well, this was all stuff from seed. Or actually, I take that back. This was a, uh, this was not from seed. This was a clone, but it was, yeah. <laughs> it was shipped via USPS, yes. But look at that. It's a little baby scale off to the races. So it's interesting. So Steve, these things start with legs and then they like latch on and lose the legs. Is that kind of how, I mean, I wish you guys could see how tiny these are on the sheet of paper. Like they just look like little specks. And of course, now they're going all over my desk. Look at these guys. They're all off to the races. I mean, that's kind of, cur I wonder if the white stuff is more eggs or what that white stuff is. <laughs> yeah, these things are probably pretty bummed out right now. Well, yeah, no, they're definitely all going <laughs> to, I will kill them shortly. That's right, they're runners. So anyway, let's see if Saul can jump on. Can you jump on for two minutes? Okay. Aha! There he is. Oh my God! All right. Them, huh? You you were right. Yeah. The, mm. the, look at all the babies. Yep. So, so I guess my first question is like, how freak? This seems like something that's pretty infrequent on cannabis, right? Yes, absolutely. I've never seen black scale on cannabis, although I'm sure others <laughs> that's, have. That's what I keep telling Tom every time I find new shit at his house. I'm like, Tom, I feel like it's like a first in the industry. Shit's found like in Tom's backyard in in the Valley of L.A. Yeah, they, I, told, they, I told him he could name all these pet, like how people get to name stars when they first identify them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, um, he's got a lot of other gardens surrounding him. He's in the neighborhood. So these are all common pests of other plants. Um, and, you know, often what will happen is uh, a flyer will move from one backyard to another. And just because, uh, you know, the insect can feed and multiply on a plant doesn't mean that it will cause an infestation that is problematic, right? So with scale, they start with, I asked this in the chat, but they start with legs and then once they latch on, do they kind of just lose the legs because they're now right. un unnecessary for the rest of their life? Yeah, that's exactly it. They just become a, a shell uh with you know 
all it does is produce eggs and um and the uh what they're called those are called crawlers um and the crawlers are are you know they hatch underneath the shell and then crawl out and well, actually let, let, here keep talking i'm just going to see if i can get another light on them yeah no you got a good photo there you can see what looks like an egg there you see that um kind of elongated you know almost like a bean um i couldn't tell you what species this is but it's not the one i've looked at before because those eggs are round um and pink so um and yeah right right now is a you know when those cr crawlers are moving out from underneath you know the mom's uh shell is is when you can when predators can target them um, because they're they're really tough to get um it's just like a you know a limpet or a, an abalone yeah in the ocean it's just like that it'll seal itself and won't let go i mean you're strong enough to to peel them off but something like a ladybird beetle would have a, would have a tough time well what was interesting was there were a lot of ant oh yeah i see an ant actually running up and down right now so is there is there like a symbiotic relationship with ants or not really like i like aphids and the mm -hmm. and the honey or the dew yeah they're um aphids and uh <clears throat> and scale insects are related they're not closely related but they're they're related and a lot of these uh, insects that are related to aphids will produce um, some type of a sugar, you know, um, as they feed on the sap, they're taking in too much sap and they exude the excess sap. But by the time it's exuded, it's concentrated into a, a syrup, you know, like a, a, and it's called honeydew and um, ants obviously love sugar so they harvest the um the sugar and they've evolved to protect the colonies of insects so let's say a, a natural enemy shows up wants to feed on one of these scales or its crawlers there's an army of ants there protecting their really what it would be is more like their flock right um it's the same as we you know as humans learn to you know, um, protect goats and uh, sheep and cows in order to have their milk, right? Same idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, so here's like, uh, hold on. Ah, there's an ant, there are now ants crawling all over my hands. Ah. Hold on, let me try to, I don't know which direction I'm. Oh, there it is. That's the wrong way. And then are the baby, because I, I don't know if you saw earlier, I showed kind of what looks like a typical scale. When these things are younger, are they uh, looking like regular scale? I mean, look at that. Th those things are wow. sealed on, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not the black scale that I saw back in the day, but uh, yeah, that's that's clearly a, a black scale. I'm sure, if you looked around enough, you'll you could find exactly what species that is. Uh, you know what? Here, here's the other one. So there is that uh, a baby black scale, or is that just a regular scale? That's a good question. I, I'm not really too familiar with uh, scale development, but usually, if things are grouped together, it's the same species. They don't, you know, they they kind of will push each other it's not like push each other out you know you don't right. see these mixes of of you know scale so chances are that's what it is but i'm not a scale expert <laughs> because i spend a lot of time you know looking at cannabis pests it's not a typical pest wow i mean so, all of these things are pregnant or have uh mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. That's nothing. Um, I've seen it where you flip over the the little cup and it's literally just full of eggs. What what's the white stuff? Is that see that it looks like either eggs or like fungus or yeah. something? 
I don't know. I I want to I want to say it might have something. It might be some waxy. Uh, Look there. Uh, there we go. That's the dude. Yeah. All right. Now what's he gonna do? I wonder if he eats any of these babies. They or... might. They might eat them. Um, you know the ants will protect them. Um, you know because they're a sugar source, but you know that there's there's a lot of protein in those those bugs. So just like just like with us, where we you know we raise cows for milk, we also raise them for steaks. Right. So they'll they'll take some. He's looking tempted. Yeah, I think he's worried that you expose them, so it doesn't know what to do. It's probably getting ready to fight, start stinging if anyone messes with them. Yeah, so I was saying that a lot of these insects, um, these you know, these insects related to aphids and scales and white flies, they have a, they produce waxy residues. Um, that that could be what that white stuff is. pretty cool though i mean it is they're they're awesome uh you know um i'd tell tom not to worry just like the last one that we found you know it's well, just... so, so the other one i mean we had caterpillar in like every single yeah that's 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 a devastating one but scale i've never heard of it you know being that big a deal and there's really nothing he can do at this point because he's in flower you know so if you're going to spray something, a horticultural oil can help. But um, but the only thing you can do now is, you know, a natural enemy. Yeah, so oh. earlier in the chat, Steve uh, put in Ponic said there's a wasp. Is there, are there wasps that... There are, yeah. And, you know, there's different species um, of wasps, so, you know, that target different scales. Um, so, yeah, for sure. For a black scale, I... I don't believe there's a commercially available wasp. You'd have to, you know, there has to be a wasp out in nature that. Um, yeah, that's good. So in nature, mm -hmm. there's probably some wasps. Mm -hmm. that's, and and that, I also find that interesting, like specific wasps are very specific to which other insect they target. Like the, like, like what, what, what's like the one that the common wasp that people use as predators? Oh, there's a number of them. Um, the most common one I would say would be like the aphidia species. Now they're kind of more generalists in that they target a number of aphid species. Not they're not just you know selective to one. Um, so yeah, it, it, you know there's some that only will target one species. There's some that will that are kind of more generalists. Um, you know, but again, once again, I don't know a lot about um, you know scale biological control. Um, I, but I do recall that um, there are wasps that will find the scale and then they do this thing called antenating where they, uh, you know, they touch the scale with their antenna and then make a decision, a, a decision, a nutritional decision, whether or not they want to sacrifice an egg. And then if they do, they decide to do it, they'll stick their ovipositor, which is the organ that delivers the egg, underneath that shell, which is really super cool because, you know, they have to get in there um, and then and drop an egg or maybe more than one egg under. And the larva will hatch from that egg and then basically feed and leave an empty shell and then emerge. In fact, you can, if you go online, you'll see, if you just type in black scale, uh, parasitized black scale, you'll probably find photos of, you know, these little black helmets with a little hole on the top of the, of the sh little shell where the adult wasp emerged after it finished developing. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Yeah, but I've never seen these before. I've seen the ones that, where the eggs are perfectly round. It looks like caviar. It's really interesting because they're it, it actually looks like pink caviar. Those ones look, all look what do you are do you think those are eggs? Yeah, the those look that are like, just sitting still? Yeah, those look like eggs. They don't have any legs. I mean these things can procreate with the best of them, huh? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, again, like like you said, Tom's got an interesting environment. It's all his neighbors. Yeah. At least these aren't going to devastate his his crop. Right. At least we've not seen it yet. So the adults, like, if you pick this thing off, is it pretty much dead? I mean, it has no legs to move anymore, right? So it's just pretty much. like, okay. Pretty much. And the crawlers probably, you know, if you, you can probably wipe them off of the plant. I don't know if, how many of his flowers had them. Uh, looked like you had about a half a dozen on that one flower, right? Yeah. I don't know how widespread they were. Yeah, let me see here. Hold on. Super cool. Uh, there we go. If you could find a, a lace wing, it'd be neat to see. You could feed it to them. Feed them to. Wait, sorry. A, feed what to who? Uh, a lace wing larva. You know, those yeah. are commonly found in gardens. Yeah, I'm holding my uh, the little light, trying to get. So anyway, that I mean, I saw the these, and you know, it's like I, my intentions are always to get up to his house every week, and then it's like two months later, <laughs> I'm back, and uh, something new. He's, he, he's usually asleep at the wheel. To to, <laughs> it, it's like I come up there and I'm like, did you notice this male plant that's grown and uh, <laughs> spreading pollen everywhere? Or, well, he's he's more kind of hobbyist, right? He's learning. Yeah, yeah. He's learning it. He's not. He hasn't gotten to to a point where it's commercial yet. So, but it's neat. I mean, we have seen some interesting things in his garden. So anyway, this so so the two thing. What so the other thing is. Um, he has tons of grubs in the, like anytime I dig into the raised bed to kind of move stuff to maybe transplant something. I, I usually transplant stuff from pots into the beds mm -hmm. and uh, they're the big, uh, what kind of beetle grub is it? The huge one? Uh, like a um, June, June beetle? Yeah, it, mm -hmm. exactly. So, so those, am I correct that at, like if you have a couple of them, they're kind of decomposers, but if you have kind of too many, it's kind of like they may start hurting your plants or? Yeah, I mean, there are grub that, that will feed on roots and others that, you know, really aren't a problem. Um, and then there are grubs that are not a problem when they're in the soil and once they hatch as adults or once they emerge as adults, um, then the adult is a leaf feeder. So, but I don't think June beetles are that big a problem for agriculture. Could be wrong about that. Yeah, I kind of uh, like I'll throw, I won't kill them, but I'll throw them out of the raised bed. And they, it, it's interesting because they are so fast to like burrow, you know, into the grass, like, and down into the soil. Like I've never seen something that can get into even hard dirt so fast as the yeah just look at that mouth part it's a you know you probably don't want to put your finger on it right it's actually funny i um it's kind of a long story but uh so i i brought one of those home um in a mason jar and then i left the mason jar outside because i was going to clean it out and then um I soaked, uh, our neighbors cut down a eucalyptus tree and, and, you know, chipped it. And, uh, so I soaked the wood chips in a, in a, you know, like a 40 gallon barrel for a couple weeks. And, uh, the, the liquid was like a beautiful amber and, uh, I wanted to show Leighton, this guy Leighton Morrison, and uh, I put it, the only thing I had out there was that mason jar, 
and uh, I brought the mason jar inside, and I was I was like, could you drink this? And he was like, yeah, you could definitely drink that. And so I started drinking it. And then after we finished, I was like, that was the same jar I had those <laughs> those grubs in. <laughs> that, and I never cleaned it out. So. Were they dead? Oh, no, no, no. The, I, I dumped them out. But oh, my point okay. is, it's like, would you drink water out of a glass that you previously had a bunch of uh, June beetle grubs in? Yeah, well. You know, back before man was hunting, um, back before hominids were hunting, grub were probably a large part of the diet. They're yeah, everyone, yeah. they're nutritious. So, you know, in this culture, in our culture, there's not a lot of um, arthropods that are eaten, except maybe shrimp and lobster, right? Crab. Right. Um, but in other cultures, grubs are still a big part of their diet um because they are nutritious you know, you just have to get over the the texture really is what it is because i hear they they're pretty delicious some of them are all right well that was uh here let me get back off that i don't think there's really much more to show with the uh with those things but uh i appreciate it in our yeah, really impromptu pest identification segment. Yeah, I mean, get, uh, probably barely a pest, but that was neat. That's neat our, our neat. bug our bug identification segment. Yeah, so okay. here, I'd like some photos if you could send them over because my colleagues and I collect this stuff when we see something new um, in this crop. You know, because everything's pretty new to us. I mean, as far as what pests are beginning to hit it. You know, it's, it's so kind of cool to have a photos of a new one. Yeah, this ant. Yeah. It's actually kind of cool. Oh well, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, so if you actually, want... you you see these various sizes, right? So you see the yeah. small one, mm -hmm. the medium one, and then. I mean, now that I see them, it they look they look like they could be a different type of scale now that i'm looking at more of them i thought you only had one but you know once again i'm not as familiar with scale um some i think this is black scales will hit a lot of um, ornamental type plants and a lot of perennials trees and stuff um so arborists i'm sure are really familiar with how to how to control them and how to identify them This guy's gonna do now. <laughs> yeah, he can't, probably can't figure out what to do there. But that source of sugar is gone now. Yeah, and then here's the. So, do you think these three in a row are all the same type? Just being you know, again, I don't want to. I don't want to guess, but they look, right. those look like what are called hard scales, armored scales. And the other ones are the black ones, ironically, are called soft scales. So. But, you know, again, I'm not I'm not familiar with their their development or their adult stages. All right. Well, we can uh, end on that, but I appreciate the uh, the impromptu yeah, man. lesson. No worries. Uh, so, 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 so actually, so uh, on, I actually have uh, an orange tree outside that I just noticed a ton of scale on. Mm -hmm. What would you, if you had scale, what would be, like, would you do a little vinegar and, and like, dilute it or... What oils are you... horticultural oils are typically what what you can use you can suffocate them uh with with oils if you don't want to use a you know a conventional pesticide a real poison you know but if you wanted to use real poisons you can find materials at at the home depot to spray your tree down but uh but oils will get them got it 
All right. Well, that's uh, this coming weekend. I'm going to deal with the uh, scale on the I mean, they're all over the outside of the uh, oranges themselves and then mm. a mm -hmm. little bit on the leaves, too. But uh, I just noticed that the other day and I was like, yeah, it's interesting is uh, they're not as problematic, you know, on the on the uh, on the rind or, you know, the outside part of the fruit uh, really um, other than appearance. You know, people yeah, no, think, it's, it's more like when I hand everybody oranges and I'm like, yeah. don't worry, don't, don't worry about the scale on the outside. <laughs> so, you know, orange producers, part of their strategy for controlling them really is just removing them from the orange. So they, right. they've got all kinds of pressure washing machines that they send their oranges through and they take care of them that way. All right. Well, this will be our let's let's do an outro with. Let me see if I can find our little, there he is. Yeah, this ant is going to be busy today. Or not so much, so you got rid of its crop. All right. Well, <laughs> I, was, I was thinking more busy trying to figure out what the hell to do. Because it's right. also not near its colony, like I brought it home. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. Well, I appreciate I it. And, yeah. Uh, Good seeing you. We should uh, do something again soon. I know we talked about uh, doing kind of the release. Uh, my my main constraint is, is uh, I'm just stretched so thin that if so I was hoping yeah. to get it like, like literally if you and Mike could just like put like a phone on something stable and just hit the record button and send it to me. I, I uh, mean, we because we, could... we did we did that that one time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and it was with a GoPro of his friend's GoPro, and I think it came out pretty well. Um, yeah. But you know, you've got, you've got all the questions. You're coming from, you know, your side of things. You know, Mike and I are on on the production side of things. You know, so. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then you have better equipment than we do too. So, um, but yeah, at some point, um, Mike's pretty busy too, and you know, it's hard to coordinate, but. Now that things are slowing down here, you know, we're talking about winter time now. Um, it's probably going to be more availability. But I'll let you know the next time uh, we start thinking about doing something because I think a video on um, how to properly drench nematodes for fungus gnat control would could be useful. Yeah, no, definitely. All right. Well, we will figure it out. In the meantime, the next bug I see, I'll uh, <laughs> we'll come back on again. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everyone. See ya.